Let's talk about one of the big topics of the day, shall we? Uh, illegal migration. Now, ministers have been forced to change the illegal migration bill. Get this, everyone. It had 20 defeats in the House of Lords. I find this quite interesting. You are a sitting member of the, of the Lords. You did indeed vote uh, on this bill. It's been doing a couple of backwards and forwards, hasn't it? It's back in the Commons today. Um, I would say that some of these amendments that have been pushed through via the Lords, they really do change things, I would argue, for the worse. Uh, so one of the big ones, um, Daniel, is in terms of applying this bill retrospectively. So that now has been kicked, kicked to the curb. So now um, this will only affect, this bill will only affect people uh, from whatever the date of this bill being put into action. I think that's a huge change. Do you support that? Uh, no, I don't support it. And I voted with the government on all 20 of the amendments over two days of voting. Um, and I think the bill should go through now. It's gone back to the Commons today. Um, the government has accepted, I think, five of the amendments. Um, and so the 15 that are outstanding, I may have got that slightly wrong, but uh, roughly 15 of them are being voted on. I expect, I don't know what's going, been going on, they started voting when I left the Palace of Westminster around that time. But I imagine the government will win those votes, and that means it'll come back tomorrow to the House of Lords, and around 6 o'clock we will start debating it again. And it's up to the House of Lords. They can say, yes, we've listened, we've made our point to the Commons, they don't agree with us, we're going to give way. But I don't expect that. I think they'll carry on, they'll put the amendments down again, or very similar amendments down again, on these outstanding points, of roughly 15 outstanding points. We'll be there all night, late tom tomorrow, voting, and it will then go back to the Commons again. And we've got time set aside early next week for it to come back to us again, because the bill has to be agreed. Uh, between the two houses. And at some point, the Lords are going to have to give way because, you know, we are an unelected chamber and if the Commons is insistent on this, we should give way. But they really don't want to. Is there a cap to this? I help people <coughs> understand that might not be familiar with all of the processes. So is there a cap to how many times you can play it back, backwards and forwards? We call it ping-pong. We do yeah. call it ping-pong. So is there a cap? So, I mean, you can no, carry there on is, There is no cap and there is somebody with a good memory who remembers that um, on at least one bill sometime in the last 20 years, it went backwards and forwards seven times. Right. Um, th that would be an extreme case. But the um, timing is everything, isn't it, Daniel? Because we're coming up to recess. Yeah. Mm. Well, there won't be a recess. They'll find more it, days. It, just keep going. They'll find more days, and they'll sit later and later and later. But it's an interesting question, because as it comes back more and more, there'll be those peers who say, perhaps on the cross benches and others, who'll say... Um, uh, we've got to give, in the end, we've got to give way to the elected House. They know that the House of Lords can't prevail ultimately against the House of Commons if the Commons is determined. There's also a very interesting question for Labour, because if this is what the House of Lords does to government legislation, that's not a good precedent for Labour to set if they think, rightly or wrongly, they're going to be the government in the quite near future. So in the, in the not too distant future. So I think there'll come a point when the House of Lords will give way and let the government have its way on this. But it's quite right that the Lords, the second chamber, um, <clears throat> it has gone through as much as it can line by line um, and has, you know, wanted amendments. I mean, that's what it's there for, is to refine well, to question. Depends. It is absolutely right that the Lords should go through it line by line because the Commons doesn't do that anymore. No. And, and the Lords does, and it But do really you does. honestly, so if but, I quizzed you online, would you amendments. honestly have read this all line by line? Yeah, yeah we do. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, they take it seriously. We really do. And um, not on every... I can't do every bill that comes forward. I pick the bills I do, but we really do know them and we're going through them in, in a lot of detail. Uh, and the debates go on. We're not time-limited on debates. Uh, so we can go on till we feel we've got it thoroughly done. But amendments that have genuinely improved the bill and make it work better are one thing. Amendments that are designed to wreck it and prevent it from working at all is something the Lords should be very, very careful about doing. And in this, and normally doesn't do, normally doesn't try to wreck a bill. Um, but in this case, I think that's what some have been trying to do. Well, it's well, reckoned it's Amendment 37. I'll give you an example. Uh, this is one of the amendments put forward in the laws. Uh, prevent the removal of LGBT people to certain countries. Well, to me, this whole LGBT thing is a gaping opportunity for abuse. 
Because, of, if, of course, if someone wants to come and live in this country and all the rest of it, to just say, well, do you know what, I'm gay and I'm going to be persecuted in my home country, well, what are you going to do as an asylum checker? You're but not that's about to the bedroom. removal to a third country, and that's specifically about Rwanda. Yes, but then how, no, what I'm saying to you... No, it's not specifically about Rwanda. Oh, where's it about? Well, it's about people, say, who came here from Iran and said that they were, didn't want to be sent back home. Um, it isn't specifically about Rwanda. Oh, okay. I, th I thought it was the. But the bill to never refers country. to Rwanda. The bill has no reference. I mean, to I, you know, the whole thing is so difficult, and we've talked about it so many times on this program, and you know, for months and months and months. The problem is that immigration, illegal migration, asylum seekers all get bundled up into the same thing, and because the rhetoric that's been used by people including prime ministers um, and some to the right what of the group. Well, the rhetoric that, you know, basically all asylum seekers should be just sent home. The fact that you have, um, you know, painting over Mickey Mouse cartoons. No, in first children's... of all, nobody's not saying that. Nobody's saying that all there asylum is, seekers should be sent there home. Is a, a... The bill doesn't say that. What the bill says is that people who've arrived illegally in this country should be taken to a safe country where they can pursue their asylum claim. It would be and helpful if we dealt with the backlog. I mean, people well, are waiting. It might be helpful if we dealt with the backlog, but the question is not the backlog. Those people are here. The question is how to, how to break the business model yes, of these huge travel company, travel agencies, no, 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 illegal absolutely. travel and agencies, every, that no, are making money out of human misery. And these people, these poor people, are actually paying money to do it. No. And if they know that landing at Dover is not going to keep them here, but they'll be going somewhere else, they might stop paying well, let me that ask money. You, let me put some different rhetoric your way, then, because Policy Exchange Think Tank, they've come out with a yeah, new suggestion I saw that. today. Brandon. Brandon Lewis, he's backed it as well. What they're saying is that why don't you extend things like the Ukraine scheme yep. and encourage people or allow people, if that's what they want to do, to put some of these uh, people, these migrants, into their homes. Would you do that? If I had space, yes, I would. And I think, you would know... Would you really? So you're telling me that someone that gets onto a dinghy where no, you don't but know who you, they but, are, no, but you see, but, not but Michelle, th this is where it all gets muddled. Those are people who are going to be held in detention or held in a centre before anything happens to them. They're not going to come in. My argument about the backlog is that there are people who've been waiting up to three years. There are something like, um, I think it's about 160,000 people. So would you take one of these people out but of the once... backlog queue out of the hotel and put them into your house? No, and that's not, what, not? That's not what they're suggesting. What they're saying is... But how... why wouldn't you? Because, because you need to know a bit more about them. But if you're processing people more quickly, the Ukrainian um, you know, safe passage, the, the same for the Hong Kong um, people who came over here, we've done it before, we can do it when it suits us. But if they got through the backlog, you would have more people who were either, yes, you can stay, you can start you know, living your life, you can go and stay with a family, whatever, whatever, and you're not uh, 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 entitled to stay, so you need to go. But all the time you've got these people clogging it up, that's going to, that creates worse feelings. It's an complete irrelevance well, to the issue in hand.